Hi, I'm Anna. I worked on a lot of the maps for the Atlas of Suburbanism's website as a research assistant and I just wanted to explain a little bit about why I chose the methods of mapping that I did. Uh, the interesting thing I think that we're trying to show about the suburbs in, in this, on this website is that they're quite diverse and, and there also isn't a clear boundary between where the city ends and the suburbs start. So although we might have fixed images in our head of what a suburb is, it's quite different when you look at the reality on the ground and that's what we wanted to show through these maps. So for most of the maps in the website, I chose to use a dot density technique which um, was proposed as, as, a, as an interesting way of, of showing bl blurs and overlaps in, in data by the by Bill Rankin, who runs a website called Radical Cartography. The thing with a dot density map that is that unlike with a color block map where you have to take an average value for an area and then color the whole area in solid, is that you can actually show a diversity of, of data based on individual data points in one area and then at the glance you can also see the density of that area. So. In, this, in the case of the maps on this website, we're showing residential density, so number of households or number of individuals, and then we can show all kinds of different uh, thematic layers in these maps. So you can look at ethnic origins, you can look at journey to work data, um, and so you can see at a glance, you can see how people get to work in different areas and also the diversities of, of things in one area, um, which is is kind of the strength of a dot density map in that you're not using the average values and you actually can see if an area has a, like a high volume of people with with high incomes but also a cluster of low incomes in that one area rather than averaging the incomes in the area and coloring it in one color. For the introduction I did use color block maps because we're trying to show three different things at once but instead of just using color block maps side by side of the three different themes uh, I actually changed the transparency on them and then layered them together so you can really see where say one one theme that's in yellow and one theme that's in blue where it overlaps it becomes green so immediately you can see if an area has a majority or has a over the average value for driving to work or owning their own home um, or both at the same time and by doing this, it allowed us to show that there are large areas of the city that are what we would consider to be have, have suburban characteristics. But there also are quite a lot of areas of the city in both the suburban and sort of downtown core where you have different mixtures of those suburban and urban attributes. And so it actually challenges the traditional picture of the clear division between city and suburbs. And, and opens up the possibility of these sort of multiple suburbanisms or urbanisms or overlapping areas of those things. And so again, through the technique, we were, we were challenging the stereotypes of what, is, what our cities are.